Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Diving into the second topic regarding the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons, I should say. That should say on there. That's my mistake. But um, it has to do with the Eagles and Giants as well as the Falcons and the Vikings. So that's where this is all leading into. This is where that's all coming from. If you weren't aware, obviously the two biggest news, Saquon going to the Eagles from the Giants and Kirk Cousins going from the Vikings to the Falcons. Nothing really seemed like an issue with those two deals at the start. You know, all players and all teams are involved in this tampering phase that is dawned upon us before the start officially of the new year, the new league year um, on Wednesday. But people are still allowed to get in contact with players' agents and discuss that way. They're not allowed to directly talk to the player. Anybody associated with another team isn't allowed to have any contact or any form of communication with the direct player. That's where the league rules are in a general sense. So, you know, once these deals got done, none of that really appeared to be apparent in any of these deals. And... Once the press conferences came out and a little bit more was discovered about these deals, um, a bit more suspicion started to rise because it started with James Franklin, the head coach of the Penn State football team. Uh, They asked him about Saquon because he is from Penn or he went to Penn State and they asked him about his deal. James Franklin indicated that Saquon and Howie Roseman talked on the phone before Saquon's contract officially expired like I mentioned on Wednesday when all deals become official from the NFL so that already is a breach right if I said that to you Saquon and Harry Roseman talked on the phone uh, about the possibility of Saquon coming to the Philadelphia Eagles that's a direct violation of the rule you can't do that that's what James Franklin said to uh, or in his interview to the people that were interviewing him So, already that raised some suspicions there, and they asked Saquon Barkley about it more at his press conference um, about it, and the direct quote from Franklin um, was that he said, Proximity to Penn State was one of the first things that Howie said to him on the phone as part of his sales pitch, and that's what he said in a short quote. You know, a sales pitch, you're going to be closer to Penn State, you're very close still to that school. You always see him coming to the games. Uh, that's a good sales pitch, but he's not allowed to pitch it to Saquon directly. I'm going to keep emphasizing that. To that, Saquon was asked about it at his press conference, and he said, I think he kind of misinterpreted it. The truth the truth was the sales pitch of Penn State, how many Penn State fans are Philadelphia Eagles fans, but that was through my agent, and my agent told me that afterwards. So very different things that could make a difference in this whole scenario. Obviously, the message got to Saquon, but it has to do with how it got to Saquon. You know, Saquon saying he said it to his agent. James Franklin said that he said it to Saquon. So, you know, that you have to dive deeper into that. You have to investigate that even more. And I think right now the league is getting all the information together, all the quotes and all the um, actions that took place with this deal, how quickly they're going to develop that and go further with it. I'll talk about that more a little bit later, but it moves me over to the Kirk Cousins situation, which happened a bit more recent because he kind of outed himself uh, in his in his own press conference when he was talking about the organization and the type of people that he's talked with at the organization from the HR team to the athletic trainer, obviously, because he's coming off of a surgery. I think the first surgery he's ever had done in his NFL career, he's coming off of that. And it makes sense to talk to the athletic trainer, right? Only if you're a part of the um, Atlanta Falcons team, which he wasn't because his press conference was on Wednesday, the first day you're supposed to have any contact with another team. And he said in his remarks in the press conference, he said that 
he spoke with the Atlanta Falcons trainer about his recovery yesterday, which would be Tuesday, because his press conference, like I mentioned, was on Wednesday. I don't have the direct quote, but he he said that, just to paraphrase it. On Wednesday, he said, I talked to, um, he mentioned him directly by name, the athletic trainer. Yesterday, the HR team, and they're all great people. It's not just about um, the teammates, the coaches. Everyone here is awesome. That's all great, but like I mentioned, you're not allowed to do that yet um, because the new league year hasn't started. So, in saying that, he kind of just outed himself. It's out there now. People asked his agents about it, but he refused to give any remarks on the topic. So, both situations are almost in the same spot where the league has heard it. Everyone's brought it up in articles or reports or whatnot. And now the league has to actually take action. They've taken initial actions about it, you know, um, raising awareness that it is out there and that it is something that they have noticed. But now it moves me on to the next part of this, how quick or how severe could this punishment be going forward? NFL executives um, in, a, in a report, in an article that I read, are split so far in the de- decision on whether or not the NFL would be able to give a big punishment right away. They Some believe that the punishment could come um, later rather than sooner. You know, they may look at it, and but they might not punish right away. They might not have a consequence right away because right now at this point, this tampering situation, because it's not so severe and it hasn't really been developed enough, the actions haven't been really been brought to light as clearly right now, they're not ha- having it as a high priority right now because, like I mentioned, they have the league meeting later this month in March, probably just two weeks away. So I'm pretty sure most of their attention is going through that, is going to that, I should say, and they have to figure that all out with because a lot of people are going to be there, representatives from all teams are going to be there. So they have to discuss the rules, what rules are going to change, what sort of, you know, direction they're going to take some of these proposals. All that's going to be discussed, so they really don't have time right now to look at these tampering issues. Because it's not like they're going to go back and just, you know, cancel the deal or something like that. It's going to still happen, it's going to go through, so... They still have some time between now and the draft if you want to take away a draft pick or something like that to make a deal. So that's why you're not really seeing anything more severe come out about this. They're going to probably take their time with it is what my feeling would be about it. But others feel that, um, you know, it is of a high priority right now, but they just have other things um, on their plate right now to do that, like I mentioned before. And on the topic of discussing what kind of punishment they could get, there have been similar situations like this in the past where I've looked at them and made my own judgment on how this could go. The most recent case of this was last year, funny enough, with the Eagles and them trying to take action against the Arizona Cardinals, specifically with their coach, Jonathan Gannon, the former defensive coordinator for the Eagles. He was moving on to the Arizona Cardinals. That was a deal that was done, and he is obviously still there with the Arizona Cardinals. But the tampering phase, how he got there, the Eagles were pushing to potentially sanction the Arizona Cardinals because they they figured or they thought that Jonathan Gannon had some prohibited discussions with the Arizona Cardinals beforehand. They had some prior conversations about them hiring Jonathan Gannon before that, and that obviously isn't allowed because he's still under contract with the Philadelphia Eagles. So, in the end, that resulted in basically a pick swapped. Arizona sent the Eagles their 2024 fifth-round pick, and they swapped their 2023 66th overall pick for the Philadelphia Eagles' 94th overall pick for Jonathan Gannon. So again, that one wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, Just prior conversations taking place. The deal still happened, still went through. They only had to switch picks and nobody lost a draft pick, so that wasn't too bad. But if you move a little bit further along, a little bit down the line, 
Um, the most severe punishment of this whole tampering situation was back in 2022, just about two years ago now, with the Dolphins owner, uh, Stephen Ross. I'm sure you guys or most of you guys might remember that, that whole issue going on with Stephen Ross. He was found to have committed years-long violations in recruiting back then Tom Brady and Sean Payton to join the Miami Dolphins and Roger Goodell even got involved. He was asked about it. He mentioned how it was of the utmost severity in this tampering sort of section of the rule books. So the Dolphins got punished the worst by it. The NFL took away the Dolphins' first and third round picks that year and fined Stephen Ross $1.5 million and also suspended him on top of that. So that's probably as bad as it's going to get with Stephen Ross type of action, you know, trying to recruit Sean Payton and Tom Brady. That's as bad as it's going to get. But I have another example with the Chiefs and their situation back in 2016 with the Philadelphia Eagles. They had their third round pick in 2016 and their sixth round pick in 2017 taken for contacting back then Jeremy Macklin from the Eagles during the uh, tampering period. They, the team, they did, or someone on the team coming from the Kansas City Chiefs contacted Jeremy Macklin in some way. So that obviously breaches the rules, and it's almost similar to what is going on right now, almost exactly the same as what's going on right now with the Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons. They took away a third and a sixth round pick in consecutive years, so if you compare the whole situations, that's not the worst thing. Third round pick seems um, like the worst it could get. There's no way that you would take away a first unless it was blatant, I think, like a blatant breach. If Howie Roseman did actually call Saquon and they actually had a direct conversation, I think it could be a bit more severe. But if it's through the agent, it should be fine and nothing really should come of this because agents are supposed to do that. Most of them do get in contact with other teams, potentially at the NFL Combine. Um, with everybody being there, it just makes sense for it to happen. And then in the tampering period, two days before the league year starts, a lot more people come out and start doing that with other teams if they feel their situations aren't getting better or they're not getting what they deserve, they feel they deserve from their current team. So all of that makes sense. It could be a little worse for the Eagles, just because of that reason, you know, the general manager directly contacting a player. For the Falcons, I don't think it'd be that bad. I I would guess they would get fined at worst. Maybe a late late draft pick gets taken away. But, you know, because it is the athletic trainer, he, Kirk Cousins is coming off an injury, and he's trying to rehab still. You can kind of see where he may slip and think, you know, I want to get ahead on my recovery. I'm going to reach out to this guy and have a feel of what we can, you know, get going as soon as he gets there. But technically, that's not allowed. So it's not the worst thing you could do. I don't think they would get it as bad as the Eagles. But we're going to have to wait and see. Like I mentioned before, it's not something that I believe the league is going to take too seriously right now. We're going to get a decision like next week or something. This is something that will build up slowly because they have to gain so much information of what is false, what actually happened, and what not. I think it could be drawn out a little bit longer, and we're going to have to see what happens. But that's kind of my verdict on it. That's where I stand on it. It is just interesting because these are two of the biggest deals, and they could have had some sleight of hand, some extra help in trying to recruit these guys to their teams. But, you know, that's the game sometimes. Sometimes you got to... If you're not if you're not cheating, you're not really trying. I'm not saying they did, but they're not going to get the players taken away from them. So that's where it stands right now. We are, we're going to have to wait and see on a final decision. But in the meantime, we're going to move on with the show. We're going to head into a second break. And on the other side of that break, I'm going to follow up with the second half of this show. Talking about the sudden announcement of Aaron Donald and his retirement. All the accolades that happened in his career and what it could mean for the Rams going forward as well as the Minnesota Vikings trading back into the first round and now accumulating two first round picks 
Are they going to do something with it? Are they going to just stay put and stockpile, make the rest of their team better? I'm going to dive into that and what I think about it. All of that and more coming up on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. You're not going to want to miss it.